Hello, my fabulously fashionable viewers, and welcome to an episode of Fashion Forward, where I take you through some pros, some cons, and some suggestions to help you get the most out of your wardrobe. Today's episode is dressing for the fair. This is the perfect time of year for the fair. I went to the fair, and it occurred to me that some people break some serious fashion rules at the fair. And I'm not talking about fashion rules in terms of, like, the style. I'm talking about the practicality. And yes, shocking as it might be, Sometimes fashion can also be practical. So in today's episode, I will be sharing with you how to put together a great outfit for the end of summertime fair, basically. Step one is footwear. You're going to be walking a lot, and if your fairground is anything like my fairground, it's a dirt ground. It's not cement. It's not neat and clean. We've got animals. We've got um, all kinds of rides. There's dust everywhere. So... If you want to wear flip-flops, that's your choice, but the problem with flip-flops is that then your feet get coated in dirt, and by the time you get home, it's pretty unsightly. The other option is to wear something like, you know, little slip-on shoes, but you don't want to wear anything that's going to be too loose because you don't want them to fly off during rides, and you don't want to wear anything that's going to not stand up to walking in perhaps the not nicest of ankle-supporting conditions. So step one, grab a pair of socks. Step two is grab a pair of runners. These ones have been with me since I was 16 years old. They're custom um, ordered because they have specific ankle support, which I need. They're really, really comfortable, and it's just a good idea to be wearing a pair. They might not be the cutest thing, but let's face it, nobody at a fair should be looking at your feet. The next thing to consider is what you're going to be wearing on your body. So we'll start with the bottom and work our way up since we started with the feet. The next point that I'm going to make is don't wear a dress and don't wear a skirt unless the skirt has leggings because nobody wants to be on a ride and suddenly have them pull on Marilyn Monroe and reveal all to the people of the fair. Maybe you have no shame, but I'm sure there are some people that would appreciate their children not being exposed to something like that. So wear leggings. I don't necessarily recommend pants because it is still August. It's pretty hot. You may want to avoid wearing anything too heavy. So leggings are a good bet and then pair the leggings with a cute skirt. Now, I like to go for interesting patterns for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's fun, why wouldn't you? And second of all, it's easier to spot an interesting pattern than a normal pattern. So for example, this is the skirt that I wore. It's got some leopard print on it, and it's easy to spot in a crowd. The next thing to keep in mind is what you're going to wear on top. This is the shirt that I chose to wear. Now, I am a huge fan of the color red, and again, it's easy to spot red in a crowd. It's nice, it's cute, it's got a sheer back, so it's a little bit sexier than just like a normal t-shirt, but it's still comfortable and it's really light. And when you pair the two, it's a pretty striking combination. However, if your situation weather-wise was anything like my situation weather-wise, you might be a little bit afraid that there might be some chill or some rain, and I will get to that. The next thing is the purse. This is about as big as I would recommend going, and my normal purses range anywhere from this size, which is pretty similar, to this size, which is much bigger. The reason that I chose this purse over this purse is that this purse has a snap instead of a zipper, and it's got fabric handles that are sewn on. This is denim. It is solid, and it has got a zipper. It is built to last, so if I have to toss it on the ground while I'm going on a ride, or bring it on the ride with me, I know this purse is going to survive. The next thing is what's inside of the purse. Like I mentioned before, it could potentially get chilly. The really cool thing about this purse, and also this cardigan, is that yes, I did totally fit the cardigan in the purse. It's great because if it's warm, I don't have to lug the cardigan around. Now, the sweater that I'm wearing right now is sort of a velvet material, and it's a bit heavy. This material is nice and light. It's pretty close to being sheer, but it still wards off the chill. So it's a great option to wear when you're at a fair with the weather being mostly sunny with a hint of... Yeah. And again, you've got the black in the black, so you know you're going to look good. But what else do you carry in your purse? Well, your cell phone, obviously. Keep your cell phone turned on and keep it to the highest possible level because there's going to be a lot of noise from the rides and whatnot. 
But if you're going into a haunted house, mute your cell phone because nothing ruins the experience for everybody like a cell phone call or a text or something in the middle of the haunted house. Keys to my house. Got some lipstick, got some makeup, gotta make sure I'm still looking good. Now, because I have some finger damage and because I'm just clumsy, I bring a couple of band-aids everywhere I go. It's just a good practice, and you never know when your finger might get pinched in a ride, or you might see a little kid that scraped their knee and is crying. Some gum, always a good option. Peppermint gum especially, because peppermint can actually help to calm your stomach. So if you're feeling a little bit nauseous after a ride, try chewing some peppermint gum. Nail clippers. Now, the reason I have these along is the same reason that I have the band-aids along, which is I have long nails, and if they break during a ride or during the experience, I would like to be able to take care of that problem relatively quick. These ones are really cute, they're easy to see, and they're easy to carry around. But then there's the problem of the wallet. Obviously, you're going to need money. That's a no-brainer. You're out of fare. But this is my usual wallet, and it is literally stocked full of things, and getting it in and out of my purse several times in one day, if I'm putting it in this one, is next to impossible. So I invested in one of these. It's made from recycled material, it has a cute little saying, if the shoe fits, buy it, and it's big enough that I could fit as much money as I need to, including change and even my debit card, as well as some identification. So, it's a much better alternative, and I can just easily stick it in the little side pocket of my purse. It's easy to find, even if the cardigan's in there. So, that is my guide to what to wear to a fair. Remember, bright, bold colors, and keep your shoe options sensible. Bring a purse that's going to be steady and stable, and make sure that you are dressed to have fun. The other one thing that I want to mention is necklaces. Now, I am addicted to necklaces. This one is not so bad because it's pretty sturdy, but any necklace with a he heavy pendant that hangs like here or lower has the potential to fly up in your face and even crack your tooth. So my alternative to wearing something like that is a cute little choker, something like this. I've had it for years. It's never done me wrong. It's got a good clasp system. It's quite strong, and as you can see, if I put it on, this can't hit my teeth. And even if by some miracle it did, it's plastic. It's a really light material, so it's not going to do any damage. So just some things to keep in mind. Um, let me know in the comments down below if you guys like going to the fair, and if so, what are some things that you like to wear when you go to the fair. And don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can follow along with all my fabulously fashionable videos. There will be another one next Thursday. Shocking, I know. And um, until then, don't forget to keep your best fashion forward. Bye.